for the conduction of this marvelous session and i like to thanks to your trusty also yes sir so corona virus is a global epidemic and global victim of confirm 32 lakhs 49022 death especially 2 lakh 30804 deaths worldwide it is huge loss of women and humanities around the world economically if i say 25000 us dollar per annum be lost by one people per year then be lost around 5 billion 770 million 100000 usd as at now it is a worldwide direct economy loss due to global peoples and global epidemic i call upon all people of the world to respect the guidelines of the leader and world health organization to save himself herself and their self international webinar on global economic development on the theme of mm. impact of covid 19 issue challenges and way forward really it is important to all of us to utilize this lockdown for the betterment of women and humanities through earn learn skill and experience from academia and corporate i want to use this singular opportunity to thank and congratulate professor dr aftab anwar sheikh principal and leader of vibrant iqac team host of this webinar with global participant professionally technically and practically i am also appreciating the effort of participant and keynote address to come forward and open to protect the people of the world through information dissemination and deliberation on impact of covid 19 issue challenges and way forward as a citizen of india promoter of global innovation peace and sustainable development and professor of information and communication technology today i am sharing my assumptions on impact of covid 19 on sectors in india on estimate data sources from ministry of commerce and industry ministry of msmes and d and b survey the covid 19 pandemics subsidies in india from its peak level and all business resume operation from june 2020 onwards although it is a steadily manner business across the globe excluding china also resume operation from the june 2020 although it is a steadily manner more business across china resume operation from april 2020 over 60% of the companies in china have actually resumed in march 2020 all industry sector its impact and recovery with the region i am presenting here so let us start from drug and pharmaceutical company that will impact with a very moderate situation recovery bit shortly livestock is a very severe case price and demand may be increased after outbreak retail it is very severe sales of essential items may recover quickly while sales of non essential items take slightly longer to recover also non food items also effect textile is temporary very moderate situation but discriminatory spending is expected to remain muted for at least one quarter however demand for essential commodity such as mask cotton rolls gauges will not be negatively impacted even if demand for low price product is start revving after the quarter in the case of logistic slowdown in the tourism sector 
will be no on effect on passenger traffic heightened risk aversion will prolong the necessary metal cases the metal industry has a strong forward linkage to many important sectors such as the automotive constructions and infrastructure hence a slowdown in the business activity in this sector will inevitably drive down from demand for basic infrastructures and the uh, <coughs> automotive sectors it's a very high impact demand for the car is likely to be deferred or dropped given by low consumer confidence subbed economic activities lower disposable incomes and higher price demand for commercial vehicles will be dependent on growth in gross material product which is expected to be slower component dependency will create supply side disruption in the case of entertainment sector the biggest concern is likely continuation of social distancing measure to avoid the risk of any replace revenue from advertisement will be dependent on the revival of the aggregate demand in the economy this sector will be very very severe and it take long time approach one year banking sector the reserve bank of india estimated that non performing assets may increase to 10.2 to 10.5% by the september 2020 with the outbreak of covid 19 this figure is expected to increase the phase to recovery will depend on outcome of measure that the rbi rbi has initiated and is likely to take place in the following weeks in the area of gems and jewelry export continue a major portion of the net sales for the domestic component with necessary pre-assembly across the globe demand for gems and jewelry is expected to be severely impacted over the next couple of year tourism sector even when the travel bans are lifted both foreign tourist arrival and domestic tourist movement are expected to remain very low because of heightened risk aversion measures related to social distancing and lower disposable income in the case of hospitality slow down in the tourism sector will have a no hop effect on the hospitality occupancy rate may remain very low until quarter first 2021 in the effort to increase and improve the bottom line many business are expected to cut down travel and accommodation cost for their employee this is a very ponderable cases in the case of electronic sector demand for white goods and other high end consumer durables will remain impaired as consumers are expected to postpone their purchase because of lower disposable income and uncertainty over growth prospect about 50 to 60% of product and 70 to 80% of component are imported and a shortage of component of electronic goods from china is like to keep price higher hence will impact demand in the case of micro small and medium enterprises is a very high recessionary pressure across the group are expected to have a direct impact on the level of global exports given that msme contribute to over 40% of the india export the impact will be severe and linear for the longer time msme are expected to experience severe liquidity problem due to delayed payment from their customer the strain in the banking system is expected to increase the credit gap for msme in the cases of the recovery period it may be from 6 month to the 12 month it is the issues in nutshell this conference shall mark a path for our ek arth shreshth arth philosophy and basudev kutumbam in creating the awareness of global innovation peace and sustainable development we greet you of you and uh, greet we greet you 
professor anwar and their iqc team from jaipur city rajasthan state of india we always salute and respect power of mother nature who made us and provide us necessary infrastructure to survive on the earth i remain professor ripu ranjan sinha open for global innovation peace and sustainable development thank you very much thank you very much thank you so much ripu ranjan sinha sir dr uh, sinha sir your insights were really wonderful and uh, really thought provoking our uh, next speaker is principal dr manoj kamat from sncac goa he is the president of goa commerce association and member of the education committee of the goa chamber of commerce and industry he will be speaking on the topic of global economic effects of corona pandemic and we are still trying to work it out with uh, dr vanida and hopefully if you are able to get through with her uh, we will uh, get her after principal dr manoj kamat sir manoj kamat sir over to you manoj sir uh one second hello yes sir we can hear you sir so so your microphone has been muted again just give me a second unmute unmute me once sir Manoj sir, can you say something? I think you're still on mute. Manoj sir, could you please unmute yourself? Is there a glitch? So please call him. Hello. Hello. The representative of the minister ko We just looking into the technical glitch just give us this bear with us. Somehow अनम्यूट एवरीवन कर दीजिए हेलो हेलो मनोज कामत फ्रॉम गोवा एंड आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दफेक्ट इकोनॉमिक इफेक्ट ऑफ पेंडेमिक कोरोना ऑन इंडिया एंड हाउ हेज इंडिया इंडियन गवर्नमेंट और फिनेंस मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया डन वॉट इंडिया हैज डन इन ऑर्डर uh to protect itself from this epidemic on the economic side uh rather i would rather speak on how the rbi has responded to all this uh you might have seen that uh, on somewhere on 17th of april that was on uh, some on friday some two weeks back rbi has come up with slew of economic measures and this particular measures were the second uh, round of measures which were announced by rbi of course the first round of measures were announced on 27th of march and we call it as the first round of boosters given by rbi 
But what has happened? What was the first attempt and what is the second attempt? And whether these attempts made by RBI would really help us uh, to boost the economic side after the effect of the pandemic is what we are going to see today. Uh, on 27th of March last month, what RBI did first was it cut the repo rate by 75 basis points uh, and they bought the repo rate at 4.40 points from 5.15 and last, that was on last Friday, that is on 17th of April, they bought the repo rate further down from 4.40 point basis to 4.00 point basis. So you have seen that there is a massive cut in repo rate which is absolutely unprecedented and outside the calendar month uh, of the RBI. Normally RBI does it only during the credit or the monetary policy. And this is for the first time that once we have, once we have realized that this pandemic is affecting the liquidity in the markets, RBI has gone to a greater extent to cut down its uh, uh, reserve, uh, your repo rate. What it did with the cash reserve ratio is that from 4%, it was brought down to 3%. And uh, they said that all banks will bring out a moratorium on EMI payments and the lenders were permitted to defer the interest rates on the working capital requirements by around three months. So you have seen that the first attempt in the first booster dose, RBI has tried to bring in some kind of a liquidity. But just within the one month of the first, uh, first booster dose, from 27th of March to 17th of April, RBI probably thought, that in India, there is something much more which requires to be done. Because not only the factories, offices, shops, hotels, restaurants, and transport services were closed, the total spending which otherwise an Indian normal citizen would have done in this particular pandemic time, that spendings have come down. This lockdown, now the probability of that particular lockdown increasing beyond the 3rd of May in the country and in the most parts of the country, millions of workers are also anxious to return back homes. So question is what would happen even if the lockdown is open in some parts of the country, millions of people would be going home and therefore there won't be any workers to work. Also at the same time, the, multi, the uh, micro as well as the small medium industry in India has suffered a lot. Uh, the other day we had P. Chidambaram, uh, the Congress party uh, representative saying that almost six crore what is say, workers from the MSME sector have, have remained affected and out of the six crore, around three crore workers will not be paid at the end of uh, April. So today is first of May and these people are unpaid. What happens in this unorganized MSME sector? Even if workers are not paid for a month, it makes them vulnerable to lose jobs. What we are worried today, if the minute they are vulnerable to lose jobs, these people will have no money even for basic spending. This will also have an effect on the demand in the entire economy. The other thing what we have seen last three, four days is the amount of gold loans taken by people in the country has increased drastically. The withdrawals from Provident Fund has, has increased drastically, which shows that people are unable to manage because there is no movement of money in the economy. And this seizing of movement of money in the economy will result into further falls, not only in the inventories, not only in the stocks, not only uh, because, because primarily there are no factories which would produce. Factories will not produce because there is no demand. And they would also not produce because they don't have liquidity to bring in the uh, to replenish their inventories, of course. So uh, one part of the pandemic effect is that government has lost revenue. The other part is the proprietor's debt and the government liabilities have raised massively. And thus, therefore, the economic challenges are, are, are very much. Now, what was the expectation of the industry? What did they want? Now, if you see that the first intervention from 27th of March till 17th of April, RBI itself realized that they were that they have failed, unfortunately, to enthuse the economy. In spite of the cuts uh, in the in the repo rate, what RBI normally expected that there would be a liquidity flush in the market, but what happened was constantly the opposite. Look at this: the repo rate was cut from 5.15 to maybe 4.50, 4 and now to 4%. Instead of the money flowing from the banks to the industry in form of credit, in form of loans, the RBI has, was flushed with more amount of money, more amount of deposits, which came from the banks. What does it mean? 
That means the banks, instead of lending to people, because the rates have reduced, have instead preferred to deposit their excessive funds with the Reserve Bank of India. And just within, say, 40 to 30 to 40 days' time, the total amount of deposits with the RBI went up from 2 lakh crore rupees to 4 point lakh crore rupees. That means more than double. And this particular rate of doubling was much more in the last 20 days' time after the first booster was announced. What is it trying? What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is the appetite of the lenders have continued to be low. Appetite of the lenders continued to be low because of the risk of loans turning into NPS. Now, the greatest defaulters or the greatest problem makers are, are there, but of course, the NDFCs who have done indiscriminate lending in the past. And now the NBFCs are also into a deeper problem. Now, NBFCs, therefore, in India had asked for a special liquidity window. And the other sectors in our economy, like the housing sector, the agricultural sector, MSME sector, the rural industry sector, demanded more finance for their working capital requirements. Now, with this, with this, there was a need for RBI to again pour in a lot of money, and therefore they come up, came up with the second booster dose. In the second booster dose, what did they do? What did they do? They bought a corpus of 50,000 rupees with NABAR. They said NABAR would do refinancing. They said SIDB would do a refinancing to the extent of 15,000 rupees. National Housing Board will do refinancing to the extent of 10,000 rupees. And therefore, the prime funding agencies, which were earlier suffering because their liquidity tightening conditions were given a little boost. Now look at this, if you count the total amount of money, it just comes to almost 70 to 75,000 75, crores extra, which will be put by RBI in, in, in the economy. The reverse repo rate, which was at 4%, now it is about 3.75. This was for the banks to encourage them to go in for lending. Because now the banks have realized that it was because of the NPA norm of 90 days, which would turn their bad loans into NPA. Now this particular classification for NPA has been removed. Why? Because banks were aware of this and of their loans getting into NPA classification and therefore not lending. So better, RBI thought that we remove the classification of NPAs with that 90 day kind of period so that uh, banks will do much more kind of lending and NBFCs also will get flexibility. Now the question is whether both these boosters would be enough for India to reboot, to regain after the pandemic uh, chaos which has created on the economy. My personal answer is a strong no, because if you look at the evidence in last one month, the economy is not at all showing any chances of revival in spite of the first dose, neither after the second dose. The reduction in interest rates, according to me, has not provided any liquidity because it was not coupled with any positive fiscal measures. What is absolutely required at these difficult times by the industry is tax breaks. What is required is grants. What is required is state guarantee for debt. What is required for the economy to move in the long run is strong sustenance of demand. So unless you let people out to buy, unless you make compulsion for people to buy, people will not. And then where is the money going to come from? When you cut DAs to the extent of generating excess revenue to the government to the extent of 35,000 crores, you understand that this 35,000 crores, which otherwise would have been pocket of a government servant, is not gone into the pockets of now government servant, will not come into the pockets, and therefore our spendings are going to reduce significantly. So therefore, what am I saying is that the private sector enterprises in India would require a much higher support this much higher support will come from increased spending by middle class. Unless there is an increased spending from middle class, the non-agricultural rural industry, the restaurant business industry, the hoteling industry, the travel and tourism industry in India is not going to be uh, coming back on, 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 not going to be coming back on the tracks unless there is a lot of incentivization. Another thing what RBI has done is RBI has increased the limits of W and M, that is ways and means advances to state governments to the extent of 60%. But you have, you have seen like the state of Maharashtra today is unable to garner more finances because it has no money. It has no money because the central government has not lended its funds out of the kitty collected from sales tax earlier, the contribution of sales tax. But then if you, if you, if you increase 
the states or uh, the ability of the states to generate more funds by going in for more more what is it borrowings to the extent of 60% would push the state governments into a more bigger debt trap of course we will be able to make the payments for our pending bills the state governments but then ultimate result would be what is a burgeoning of the fiscal deficit of course some part of the fiscal deficit will have to be monetized in the long run but then at this particular depressing times what is what is expected from the government is giving states more finances more money out of the common kitty and also offering a lot of doles of incentives for the industry to start primarily the middle as well as the small scale industry last month you have noticed in the month of march government said we have announced a package of 1.7 crores the actual package the cash component of the package is less than 60 to 70000 almost equivalent to the cash component of the package which is released by the government the currently the financial institutions have, of the country have what is a relaxed or has written off loans to the extent of 65000 crores now question is now there is a hot debate going on in in uh, in, in the print that write offs are not waving off write offs are not wave offs so therefore these people will not be let free and therefore the efforts for uh, recovering the money which is lent by the banks will still go on my question is why the fugitives why the people who have absconded why the people who have left out of the country and why their loans are being written when you write off loans to the extent of 65 to 68000 rupees on the other hand you cut the da's of government servant to the extent of 30 to 35000 crore rupees of course it is going to weaken your demand it is going to weaken the confidence on the government uh, so therefore i say that the size of the package which was given which was close to 1.7 as what the government says is not even close to 1% of the gdp of the country in comparison the united states united states have declared a financial package which is to the extent of 10% of the gdp and what we needed in india is a financial package which is equivalent to 4% of our gdp to the minimum but what is currently given by the government is less than 1% of GDP to the economy. So therefore I say that only RBI acting and reducing rates is not going to be enough for the industry to come back on the tracks. The RBI, the state governments and the finance ministry must work in a coordinated fashion because millions of workers have lost their jobs. Millions of workers are seeing cut in salaries. The government servants are seeing cut in their dearness allowances and millions of families will be pushed below the poverty line because of this corona pandemic in india so if you look at the rate of deaths today 30 to 35000 the rate of people affected with this particular death is not only 100 but 1000 times more than the people who are actually affected so therefore the economic effects of the corona virus uh, is much more than the what is the, uh, the the direct impact what corona has on my and your life thank you for your patient listening hello sir yes Maruk. i'd like to ask one question to you please do how well india is prepared for the of lost jobs and income the mindset of rich and poor. Correct. I, I don't think that we have done enough to protect the incomes and the lost jobs because most of the people who are working in the private sectors today, private sectors today are the worst to be at affected. Of course, the government sector employees are also affected because our DAs are cut and we don't know if the financial emergency is, is, is bought in by this particular current government. Our all incomes, of course, will be affected in the long run also. Currently, the most segment of people who are vulnerable are those people who are living and making daily bread by their daily attempts those people who are vendors those who are retailers those hawkers and those people who are making something or getting into an economic activity for making their daily bread are the ones who are worst to get affected in the united states we have one package called as pay paycheck package protection of paycheck protect package the other day we had one political party that was the congress government which congress party which suggested to this government that you need to come up with a scheme which is called as pay to payment paycheck to payment package where more than three crores of rupees three crores of people were earlier in the income tax net out of that one crore people will not have any incomes this year 
That means even if you had to assume that these people were earning somewhere close to thirty thousand rupees per month earlier and were paying taxes, out of this one crore people will not have any incomes. So the suggestion was just like how United States has offering protection to paycheck. That is some part of the salaries which they have lost or which they would not get should be passed on by the government to these people. And even if government gives them something like that of fifteen thousand rupees. Instead of this thirty thousand rupees to one crore people, the total amount which would be required is less than fifteen crore, a uh, fifteen thousand crore, which is much less than any other thing. So this kind of people who are working in the private enterprises must be supported at this minute, because if these workers are out of these jobs, there is no chance that this MSME sector in the country will be at all revived. So I see job losses is the greatest factor. And unfortunately, as of today, I don't see government doing anything to protect the economic interest of these job losers. Sir, one more, one more. Which sector of the economy are likely to recover the fastest after this pandemic? Anyway, the economies which are still doing well today is the pharma sector. The economy which is still doing well today, in spite of the pandemic, because there is demand, is the telecom sector, the hospital sector. The immediate revival which you would see is, of course, the FMCG sector, or, or, or the, which would take around two to three months to time. But of course, with the general provisions coming, etc., back to track. Uh, if even if you look at the restaurant business sector, has an what is a potential to revive soon because all are waiting out to spend some money. But even for that to happen, government has to ensure that there is enough money in the pockets of common people. Unless that happens, uh, things would be very, very terrible to come. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. So, so there is one one question which uh, even I would like to get an answer to. Uh, yeah. The question is that will there be cobra effect on the economy? Global effect. Cobra, cobra effect. Will there be a cobra effect on the economy? Certainly, there is an effect. And uh, rather than using the word cobra effect, I would say, and uh, it, it it is this is a pandemic. Pandemic brings an entire effect, has brought an entire effect on the world, and uh, this, of course, we cannot be an exception. So it is very, very difficult for us to revive. Of course, it is not impossible for us to revive because we have always been persistent uh, in in terms of our economic measures. Uh, but then uh, there has to be some kind of seriousness. Unless you make the state governments to spend more money, or unless the state governments has a comfortable cushion to spend more money, I don't see any particular chances. I see one important question here from Pallavi Singh Yadav to everyone. Don't you think this moratorium is a false hope to borrowers? Yes, it is only the false hope. Though even you say that this particular moratorium, three months you don't have to pay. If you go to the bank and ask them to calculate, of course, three months you are not going to pay, but the installment interest is still getting accumulated. If you don't pay for this three months, you end up paying much more to the banks as compared to what otherwise would have what otherwise would have happened. So such kind of things about you know having a moratorium certainly false hope to the borrowers, and of course the borrowers don't understand your basic. They would end up uh, paying uh, much more than uh, what otherwise they would have paid. So good question, Pallavi. Whatever it is. Yeah, I request all the participants to kindly mute their microphone. Participants, I request you to kindly mute your microphone. Thank you. Uh, but with this, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kamatha. It was really informative and a lot of wonderful insights into uh, what what is happening and what, how we're supposed to look at this in the future. Uh, I think uh, Vanita is here with us. Uh, Vanita, can you hear me?